Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. Welcome back down to the dungeon. Today, we are out in search of answers. We're out in search of knowledge and learning from our mistakes. Earlier in the winter, I tried to make a snowboard base out of recycled HDPE. HDPE is a plastic in the polyethylene family. It's high density polyethylene, which is a pretty commonly used base material. It's very similar to UMPI, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene which goes by the brand name Ptex, you might have heard of it. And I had some trouble. I had some trouble getting that plastic to bond to the epoxy resin that I was using, which isn't surprising. Resin doesn't bond to plastic. I tried sanding and I tried flame training, which are kind of the industry standard treatments to get those materials to adhere to each other. And it just didn't work. What I'm setting out to do today is a little bit of an experiment. And the first thing that we need to address is the source of the plastic that I used last time was laundry detergent bottles. And they were thinner than the industry standard for snowboard base or ski base material. So I was out looking for other sources and this is what I came up with. Your standard five gallon contractor bucket. This has a couple things going for it. One, it's bright, which is fun. And it's also actually a little bit thicker than the kind of material that you get if you were buying the material from a hobbyist supplier for making skis and snowboards. So that's good. It gives us a little bit of extra wiggle room so we can get it closer to the thickness that we actually need. Great. What needs to happen next, I need to test a bunch of different surface treatments on this plastic to see which holds better to resin. So what I've done is I've cut out a bunch of strips just so that we can kind of have a similar surface area and I'm going to treat some of these in a different way. I'm going to be testing two things. I'm going to be testing sanding and the grits of sanding. So whether sanding the surface, not sanding the surface, and how rough the surface is going to be. What effect that has on the bondability of our materials. And I'm also going to be testing flame treating, which, as I kind of mentioned, that video is... I don't understand it. I don't... I don't get it. I don't get why you're supposed to flame treat plastic in order to have it adhere to resins better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a control. I'm going to have one piece that is just left alone, treated as is. I have no expectation that that's going to stick. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand three of the pieces in different grits. I've got a 400 grit, a 150 grit, and an 80 grit. So I've got a super fine tooth. I've got a pretty medium, but relatively nice tooth and a really aggressive one. That'll leave different surface finishes on the plastic, different textures for the resins to seep into and solidify and hold things down. Is it more advantageous to have a rough finish or more advantageous to have a fine finish? We'll find out. The thing that I want to do after that is for all three of those sanded finishes, we're going to try two different types of flame treating. I'm going to try flame treating the plastic before I sand it and I'm going to try flame treating the plastic after I sand it. Just to recap, the knowledge that I have on flame treating is it's not a heat treatment, it's a flame treatment. You slowly pass an open flame over the plastic and it's a low flame and it's supposed to oxidize the surface and do things. Now, I'm not sure what those things are, so if you know, please leave a comment below because I have been, well, because this is a little bit of a white whale. I've been after this little nugget of information for a long time. I don't understand and I really want to. But that is one of the standard industry treatments to make plastic bond better to resin. So we're going to try it and test and see if it helps and if order matters and if it does, which either before or after sanding works better. The last stage is I'm going to make sure my plastic is really clean. Did a short little search on the internet. I'm going to use acetone because it's a really aggressive solvent. It'll clean off any particulates. It evaporates, but it won't hurt HDPE. I guess it's a pretty chemically resistant material, which is cool. But it also explains why it's probably not sticking to our resin so well. So that's what we're finding out. We're going to find out if any combination of these things that I can do here in my home shop with the tools that I already have will get my plastic to stick to my snowboard. So let's get cracking. The first thing I did was mark all of my samples with the way that they were going to be treated so that I could keep them organized as I went through the process. I had my control. I had 400, 150, and 80 grit sanding with no flame. I had the same grits where the plastic was flame treated before the sanding, so flame first. And again, the same set of grits, but with the flame treating after the sanding, so flame after. So what I did was first go in and sand the samples that were only getting sanded and sand the samples 
They were getting sanded with the flame treating afterwards. Then I grabbed the torch and ran the torch over both set of samples that were getting flame treated. The ones that were getting sanded before and sanded after. And then I grabbed that last set that were getting flame treated before they were sanded and gave them a sanding as well. When all that was done, I took all those samples, grabbed my bottle of acetone, and wiped each of them down to make sure that the bonding surface was nice and clean in hopes of improving our chances of having them bond well with the resin. While all that acetone's curing, I set up my test layup, and first thing I did was set up a little platform so that it would be easy to get clamps in and around the whole setup. After that, I laid down a sheet of plastic over everything. This is to prevent the epoxy from attaching our experiment to my workbench. In the middle of the layup, I wanted it to approximate an actual snowboard as much as possible, so I have a sheet of Baltic birch, which is the material I've been using for all my powder surfers. I've got a small layer of a light fiberglass. This is a six ounce biaxle fiberglass. It's not the same one that I've been using in my snowboards, but I just want to see if the resin fiberglass combination has any impact on this bonding. On top of that is where our samples are going to go. And then there's going to be another sheet of plastic, again, to stop everything from binding together, and a board that I'm going to clamp everything down with. One last thing that I had to do was to mix up a cup of resin that I could then use to bind the whole layup together. I also drew a line on my board because I wanted to make sure that the samples all had the same basic surface area down, but I wanted to leave some overlap as well so that I could pull on them and see how strongly they bonded. So the first step was to wet out the wooden board. And then to lay down my fiberglass and wet it out as well. And then to wet down and apply each of the samples. cover it with plastic, put down my top board, and I also am going to use a baffle here. I'm using four of the same clamps, and the extra height of this piece of wood will help distribute and spread out the clamping pressure. I'm hoping that that'll make it so that all the samples kind of get an equal clamping pressure, and hopefully differences in that clamping force won't affect the outcome of the experiment. Okay, so that's our little test layup done. I wanted to get as close as possible to my normal snowboard layup setup. So I used a long cure epoxy. I used a West Systems, which is a boat building epoxy. It's very good for snowboards, but it does have a 24 hour cure. So I'm gonna leave this alone. I'm not gonna touch it. When this is all solidified and locked into place, we'll come back and we'll figure out which treatment method gave us the best bind between the plastic and the resin. Alright, well, oh. the epoxy cured. Epoxy cured real good! Alright, let's pull this guy apart and see how we did. There you go, there you have it. That's all of our samples adhered to our example layup here where we've got our core and our fiberglass. What I'm going to do next is I got myself a pull scale and I'm going to attach it one by one to each of these samples and pull on the samples till they come off. So let me set up a quick jig so that I can get all of that going but also so that I can film the values on the scale and then we will conduct our experiment. So here's our test setup. We've got our hanging scale here. I've got a small sports camera. It's hopefully going to be able to pick up all the readings on the scale so that we can compare and contrast. We've got our samples, and what I'm going to do is I've got this little clamp, this little C-clamp. I'm going to snug it up just so that it can barely move around on samples, and then turn it a half turn. Hopefully that'll be enough pressure so that it doesn't slip away, and that way we can kind of get an even clamping pressure on each of the samples, and hopefully it won't affect the, uh, the results too much. And then I'll just loop that clamp around the hook here, and we'll give it a good old pull and see if we can't pull these strips up. And uh, one more thing is I've just got gloves because fiberglass, you know, it's not fun. So just make sure that's all teared out. It is. We can see it in there. Take our C-clamp and clamp it to our control here. 
This one should pull off really easily because plastic doesn't adhere to epoxy or epoxy doesn't adhere to plastic. And we didn't treat this in any way other than to clean it off with acetone. So let's see what we get. Oh yeah, yeah, pulled right off. I'd be surprised if that even registered. Cool, so that's an effective control. Next, we're gonna go through the, the samples that were sanded but not flame treated. The first one is 400 grit, super fine, super fine grit. Okay, that definitely gave us a little bit better of a bond than the untreated one did. I had to pull quite a bit harder. On to the 150 grit, the medium grit sanding. It's promising. All right, still was able to pull it off, but again, it looked an awful lot like we had to pull harder that time than the previous one, if only slightly. And then down to the 80 grit, sanded but not flame treated. Okay, cool. All right, now we're gonna get into the flame treated options. First set that we're gonna do is the ones that were flame treated first and then sanded. And again, we're gonna do them in order of the grits. This is the 400 grit flame first. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. On to the 150 grit, flame treated and then sanded. Okay, and now the 80 grit, the flame treatment first. Come on, come this way. All right, a little bit more encouraging. And then on to the last set, which was the, the set that was sanded first and then flame treated afterwards. Again, starting with the 400 grit. Whoa, damn. Holy crap. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it pulled up the fiberglass. Wow. Wow. Let's try the other two grits. Alright, the 150 grit. Same deal. Okay. Huh. Go figure. That's really odd. Okay. And finally, the 80 grit. Nah, dude, that's not right. What went wrong? Why Why did I get such a weird result? Something about that seems suspicious. <laughs> I kinda don't believe it. Well, willy, well, well, willy, well. I went back to the tape and I figured out exactly what happened. Did you catch it? Here's a video of me sending the piece that I marked for 80 grit with 400 grit sandpaper. So that last set of examples that we tested, I had the 800 and 400 grit switched, which is why the ratings were a reverse of the trend that we were seeing in the other sample sets. Let's take a look at the final verdict here. Our control sample split off from the board at 1.3 pounds. And I'm using pounds just because it's something that I've got more of an intuitive feel for in my brain. Real science units, I'm not so good at. What's up, pup? Gene the dog is down there. For the set of samples that were not flame treated, the 400 grit sanded sample peaked out at 4.8 pounds. The 150 grit sample peaked out at 11.4. The 80 grit sample peaked out at 16.7, which seems to indicate that if you're just sanding, a coarser grit is gonna get you a better bonding strength than a lighter grit. 
And that trend continued as we went through our other sets of flame treatments. So for the set where we flame treated the plastic before sanding it, the 400 grit was actually less well bonded in this one case than the sample that wasn't flame treated, coming in at 4.6 pounds. Uh, we saw that trend continue with 150 grit where for the sample that wasn't flame treated, we were at 11.4. For the sample that was flame treated before sanding, we were at 9.4. So two pounds weaker in its bonding strength. And then for the 80 grit was the only place that we saw an improvement with the flame treating before versus just not flame treating at all. The 80 grit for that group came in at 17.4 pounds, beating out the 80 grit in the not flame treated group by fractions of a pound. Where things started to get really interesting and promising was of course the flame treatment after sanding. And once we switched the values that I had written down for the 80 and 400 grit, we still got that increase in value as we went lower in grits. So the more coarse it got, the higher bonding strength it got. But check out the improvement in bonding strength, flame treating after sanding. The 400 grit was 6.8. That's about a third stronger than the other examples, which were coming in somewhere around 4.6, 4.8. The 150 grit was 29.8 pounds, beating out the 80 grit for both of the other categories by, by 10 pounds or more. And then the champion, the definitive winner, best way to treat your plastic is to sand it with a super coarse grit, 80 grit, and then flame treat it afterwards, clocking it at an astonishing 55.3 pounds, not before the bond between the resin and the plastic gave way, but before the bond between the resin and the fiberglass gave way. Wow! I was not expecting to get to, to get results like that. I was not expecting to get such an astonishingly strong bond, just given the treatment here at home. And also given that I don't know what the flame treatment is even doing. So, cool! We know it works, and we know what order you want to do it in. We know that you want to sand coarse, and then you want to flame treat afterwards. And make sure everything's nice and clean from the solvent and that'll give you a really good bonding strength. So that is absolutely enough information for us to go with. I just wish I knew why. <laughs> I just wish I understood why, but it's, it's pretty exciting. So practically I have the information I need going forward. But again, I've said it a number of times throughout the course of these videos. If you understand what flame treating does to a plastic to make it bond better to a resin, drop a comment down below, shoot me an email, send me a smoke signal, release a pigeon, Tell me, because I'm really curious. It's not useful information for me to have at this point, really, anymore, but I like understanding why things do the things they do. And this is one of those cases where it obviously works, and I'd like to know why. But yeah, how about that? Super exciting results from this experiment. We've definitely got a better idea of what it is that we need to do to be building at least this one part of a snowboard better going forward. Couldn't be happier with how it came out. We're gonna take this new knowledge and go forth and apply it to some projects. So. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it enlightening. I hope it was exciting. It certainly was for me. In both cases, it was enlightening and exciting. And if you enjoy this kind of content, if you want to stick around and see us build more boards, hit subscribe. Come hang with us. We're going to make stuff for the rest of the year. I always appreciate having you here. So until next time, I'll see you soon. I was not expecting to get... Ooh, hello. I always appreciate having you here. And until next time...